podcast ko music. Okay, let's start. Rule number one: no whining. I get nervous with tests. 
don't know. Sorry, I did tests as a kid, but I'm silent. Answer the first thing that comes to mind. Okay, sure. Klagenfurt, the city. What? I was born there. You like it? Yeah, sure. Did we start the test? Are you comfortable? Oh, uh, not really. Why? Why what? Why are you are not comfortable? Too many people. And? Coughing. Don't want to get sick. Have you been sick? Don't you remember? Is this the test? Yes. You walk and enter the ocean. Never been in the ocean. Doesn't matter. You walk and enter the ocean and you feel which one? Which one? Which ocean? Doesn't matter. Okay. In the ocean you feel the hand holding your hand. Is the hand of the kid. A kid? Yes. In one boy, you know what is a kid. Sure. Never seen one. Doesn't matter. What do you mean? Can be any kid. You lose him in the ocean and he drowns. You don't do anything to help him. Why? Why would I? Is a kid. Never seen one. And still, you would let him die. What? These are just questions. Let's continue. You are in a helicopter that is on fire. Will you push your mother to save yourself? Mm -hmm. Okay, nice to joke. joke. Or fiction. Go on. Beat it. fake moustache that causes laughter in church. Of course, I am happy. Tell me to harm people, but I don't like it. I don't want to hurt anyone. 
Hello, everybody. We are now in season nine, episode one, and we will be speaking with Enrique Mendoza Mejia from Mexico, but uh, now living in Austria and developing his work in different countries. Well, uh, hello. Uh, thanks, first of all, a lot for the invitation. It's really cool to be here. And uh, well, my name is Enrique Mendoza Mejia uh, from Mexico City. And uh, well, I am a composer. I'm a musician. I um, started studying classical composition in Mexico. Then I went to the Netherlands to make a, a master's in composition for film. Jos Svanenburg, that was kind of my tutor there in the conservatorium. And he was the first one to show me about electronic music and electroacoustic. I started doing electroacoustic composition, electroacoustic music, and then I never stopped. I keep on doing mixed music, like live instruments with live electronics, mainly with Max, patches, and these kind of tools. But little by little in the last two, three years that I started my PhD here in Austria is when I, I start writing a little bit less, less and less scores and just doing pure electronics, pure acousmatic music. Very briefly, well, what I am doing now is working a lot, uh, composing and performing uh, electroacoustic acousmatic in, the, in that sense of, the, of that style. 
and dealing with multi-channel systems and with 3D audio or spatial audio. There are several ways of naming it. And, well, thinking about the composition, the electroacoustic composition through for these systems and also through these systems, no? what are the possibilities that they bring? And, of course, it's been already for a while here in Europe, mainly, uh, already more than 50 years. But, well, there is still kind of a lot of space and a lot of uh, ground to be discovered, I think. Well, for me, I mean, uh, Austria has been always kind of a little magnet in my life. When I was thinking about making a PhD, I always kind of back down because a lot of the, the PhDs were academic research. And I am not very much into, into that. I don't consider myself like a, a, an academic or, or very hardcore academic or anything like that, but more a composer, a musician. And I wanted to do a PhD. I wanted to do research, but the artistic part or the creation, uh, uh, the creative part should be the most important thing because what I don't want to do is to stop making music. So here in Austria, eh, I was doing a residency in, in Krems an der Donau, a, a city here in Austria, and then I I met uh, Folk Marklin, who is my first assessor now in the PhD, and he is teaching in the Anton Bruckner University, where they have this new PhD based on artistic research, practice-based and practice-led. It's from within your creation that you bring new knowledge to life not by analyzing your own work or by analyzing the work of others or researching about characteristics of the works of others, or not even you, it's about the creation. So I got accepted to the university and then, yeah, well, I moved here to, to Austria. Also, since I went to live to the Netherlands, for example, I took a decision about trying to do everything in English because I am living here in this side of the world. Everybody in the music circle I work speak English. If they do electronic music, I'm pretty sure they speak English and stuff. So I just wanted to keep it like, let's say, the more international, easy, uh, even my scores. I took that decision, right? like as I was saying, like all the indications, all the writing is going to be in English. Lately, like a lot of uh, technologies in my life, let's say, came together and also, especially here in Austria, when I started my research here, is also about the development or the design of a system that I did called the hybrid audio diffusion system, as you were saying, the HATS, I call it. There are so many tools now also to make electronic. It's easy to get lost. And at the end, I kind of end up using the tools that I could go deeper with them. I could find a more organic interface for performing, for a recording for making the sound design of, of what I imagined for the pieces. For the live electronics, normally I was using a lot max to process the sound live and also for the performer to make it easy for them to perform with the electronics. But then in an easy setup, for example, with a MIDI pedal, just putting the patch in the next stage. I was working a, a lot with that, but uh, as I doing more and more uh, pure electronics without acoustic instruments, let's say, but also live. So that was like an, another stage that how I can perform uh, live electronics, that everything is being born already from the computer. But so I've been trying kind of developing, let's say, my own setup that is very personal, which controllers in this case is not very advanced in any sense, just also still using a DAW that could be Logic, could be Ableton Live now, that is very, very cool for, for live performance. Combining it, so these digital tools, but also with the analog world. So I use analog synthesizers. I also build my own little oscillators, uh, kind of lo-fi uh, mini scenes, but also with tiny uh, commercial scenes. But at the end, putting it everything on the computer and processing it live, mainly with spectral tools, tools that analyze the input, whatever I am doing from the analog scenes or like from live sources or from samples that are already recorded. Well, so this is a little bit a kind of, let's say some of the tools for, for performing, also for a composing. When I am composing, one of the things that for me is the main difference, for example, between writing scores and doing electronic music is that when I'm writing scores, normally it will become to life way later in the process, no? when you are maybe in the first rehearsals with the ensemble or with the performers. But then all that time, 
you were not working with the sound. You were working with paper, let's say, and your imagination. That that's it's not a complaint. It's just a description, let's say. But when I also compose electronic music, I am working and dealing with the sound right away. It's manipulating the sound, creating it with the synthesizer or with samples. I don't even have to write a score for those pieces. They don't need it. There is no useful, I mean, unless somebody wants to analyze them, right? Or something like that. But uh, trying to use a lot of types of different things and sensors and this and that and that. But well, also finding myself. In that aspect, sometimes I also combine a, a visuals, video, no? but well, we could talk about that later. Once I was doing in Mexico, uh, actually a couple of experiences that I have that will let me or allow me to explain also this idea of the multi-channel or how I, I arrive to these other technologies about spatial audio or immersive audio and spatial music 3D. And I was starting to build my own kind of things. Then I was doing actually a master uh, of, of a piece of mine. I was comparing how it was my stereo field with my speakers, with my headphones. And then in a moment, I kind of did a mistake. I put the headphones and I was listening in both systems. Okay, actually it was sounding cool, you know, and then I turn on again the speakers and turn off the headphones and okay, like something is happening. No, I am receiving different sources of the same sounds, but in different uh, uh, distances. And also I was closing my eyes and I was starting to hear some sounds in the back of my head. And the second one, we were checking the homework of a student about film. So they, he was showing me the sound design of a movie. When the movie was over, I started to, to, to give my feedback to the student. And then I said, and especially those sounds of a metal shop were amazing. And then we come back and there was nothing. And the sounds, they were from the environment of my street. In the corner, there is a metal shop. Due to the context I was listening, this idea of the open headphones, how another source can get in this sound stream at the same time that I am watching a movie. And because of the context, they did some kind of coherent sound thing. no? And I was listening it even in my left side. So I said that was kind of my second experience. I imagine like a lot in science and in art happens yeah, from a personal experience. And maybe I can I can research a little bit about that. Also, because of film, there is a lot of advancement in surround sound. Actually, in a lot of times, a lot of decades since it started, a lot of the development has been done in that field. Actually, not that much in the experimental music or in the electronic music. And now they are kind of together because now I you need to think about the space is another parameter. Well, even in stereo, we need to think about space because there is already a field. I started to really research and go in deep, not only in electronic music, like in composition, but in spatial music. And of course, well, you start to hear about, of course, Schaeffer and Stockhausen, no? like the French, the Musique Concrete, and then the, the electronic music in Germany. They are the ones that start to also doing quadraphonics at the beginning, this and that, even though, as we were saying, Walt Disney already presented, I don't know what, in the 30s with speaker arrays and microphone arrays and these kind of things. And the binaural technology that you mentioned that I am uh, using it now. Uh, now for my creation, it was invented in the 30s by Alan Bloomline, but it was not very used no, by the consumers until now. There is kind of this hype about spatial audio, immersive audio, but also a lot of people is listening now in headphones, way more than speakers than in the previous years. So it's kind of a perfect time to start doing things with binaural audio because people already has been listening in headphones, that that's what you need, no? That's the monitoring system for binaural productions. Anyone with a proper set of headphones will be able to listen a 3D uh, impression of the piece. So that's for sure. Everybody, I recommend that get their best headphones they can. They don't matter if they are open or close or outside the head or the earbuds, no? Like if you concentrate and then you close your eyes and then you will be able to hear this sphere of sound around you and all the sounds moving. Of course, I prepare these versions for the radio, the radio edit, because then, of course, there is no hybrid diffusion system, right? It's going to be only headphones. So, yeah, we are missing a lot of the experience, but it's also a great experience to listen just binaural. And the thing I did in this case is to put what it was sounding on the speakers together with what was sounding on the headphones and created everything towards the headphones. 
going to the hybrid audio diffusion system, everything was converging into that moment, right? That uh, it occurred to me this idea of, of develop and design the hybrid audio diffusion system. The, the main core is the idea because I am using two monitoring systems at the same time. So I am using this idea of the open headphones to allow sounds from sources outside to come inside in the, in the audio stream and to use multi-channel speaker setups. But also this idea can have multiple uh, ways of performing with it. And also I can put it in a, a lot of places. So it's kind of very modular in a way, but the idea is to have these two monitoring systems working at the same time. So for example, create a 3D sphere of sound with the headphones, with the binaural technology. So there is one field already, a 3D uh, sound field with the headphones around your head. And then with the technology of Ambisonics, I create another layer of uh, 3D audio with the speakers. And it can be expanded. It can be different types of uh, uh, speaker setups, but also so when I'm combining it with the headphones, the idea is to create an augmented 3D sound field. Normally, we only use speakers or normally we only use the headphones. And for me, the idea, I didn't invent the headphones or the speakers, just the idea of combining it and exploring it in a lot of perspectives, how this could work. And it, in reality, creates this augmented uh, 3D sound field. The idea is that I can put sounds inside your mind or inside your head, and then take it super far to the speakers and even further with reverbs and this type of acoustic treatments that it can be uh, done. So the hybrid audio diffusion system at the end, it's consisting in the combination of open headphones and speaker arrays. But yeah, like if I go to another place, another concert hall, and in that case, they have 36 speakers. So I take my headphones for the performance, for example, and then with Ambisonics, it's easy to what I already create as a sphere of sound with Ambisonics, I just decode it for the new uh, multi-channel uh, speaker array. That's one of the advantages of Ambisonics, of this technology that is independent of the monitoring system. So, uh, for example, this week we, we started to use it now because just in the recent years, in the late maybe four or five years, uh, I don't know exactly, but now there are even um, free uh, digital tools to use it. Before that, it was invented in the 70s, for example, but we couldn't use it too much, this idea of ambisonics, because there was not too much technology developed and it was not on the reach of everybody. Now, anyone with a door, you can have these plugins for free. And then, of course, the idea, like everything, is how you create with it and, and all, all that part.
the hybrid audio diffusion system is really giving me a new new ways now when I am creating with the speakers and the headphones. It has already triggered new new ideas at least. If I do this while in the headphones is sounding this, in the speakers is sounding this other thing, what is the relation between one or the other? And yeah, let's see where it goes. No, it's kind of getting some traction, let's say. And then especially also working with the Vienna Cosmonium from Thomas Gorbach. We are working together and we already did a concert within the Cosmonium with an ambisonic 3D sound feel already. And then also plus the headphones no, in, in two different festivals. And it's been really, really cool to put together all these concepts.
thank you again very much. I enjoy it a lot that uh, you give me the opportunity of talking about my process, my, my music, the tools. And just remember that it's not about the tools, it's about the music at the end, always. Reiteramos la invitación a todos ustedes para seguirnos en los diversos episodios de este podcast llamado Comusic, en el que estaremos presentando creaciones nuestras y de nuestros colegas. Si quieren conocer algo más de nuestro trabajo o recorrido, pueden acceder a la página web https comusicpro comusic con K, o escribirnos al correo electrónico comusic 678 gmail.com. Los esperamos en los próximos ciclos de episodios. Mm -hmm.